What's going on, my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach. And in this video, we're gonna be going over distance rate time over here. So this is a distance rate time word problem, and this is a specific type. This is a multi-object distance rate time problem. So typically you can have single object distance rate time problems, multi-object where there's two things happening at the same time, or you can have those miscellaneous type that kind of go all over the place. So in this one, again, this is multi-step or multi-object. And we're gonna be taking a look here, and I'm gonna break this down for you nice and easy. So before we do remember, we have a free class on this tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. So go ahead, use that link right over there that you see, where it says asvab.info slash class. Go to that link and register for our free class and free practice test. And guess what? That, that free practice test, it has video solutions. That way you can learn from every mistake and you can lower test anxiety and understand what you need to work on next. That's what I'm here for, I'm here to help. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here on this problem. First things first, when you're doing word problems, the first thing you need to always do is read the question first. Don't go to the problem. Don't read through all the information and start confusing yourself before you know what its use is. Start with the question right over here. So it says, assuming both vehicles travel continuously, at what time will the jet reach the plane? So right here, what time? Remember, those action words there for questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how many, which of the following, all that good stuff. That's what you're focusing on. So what time will the jet reach the plane? Sounds good. Sounds good. We're looking for a time. We're looking for a time. That's what we're looking for. And all of these are in PM. So I'll just say whatever PM uh, jet reaches plane. Let's keep it real, my math party people. I know that watching these ASVAB videos on YouTube is great, but what if you could join me live for a free class once a week? I do have free classes live once a week for two hours a piece for ASVAB math. So why not join me? Click the link right here. That way you can join me, raise your score for free, and keep kicking butt like you're doing right now. Let's get back to the action, but I hope to see you in class soon. Click there and let's get started. Jet reaches plane, right there. So I just write that down a lot. I do that a lot simply because the thing is, when you're doing long word problems or even short ones, has this ever happened to you? Where you try to do the word problem and then you're about three, four steps in, you have a number, you calculate something, and you're like, oh, 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 that's the answer. I got it. Even though you're maybe like halfway done. But that's happened to us a lot, right? Where we get so stressed and fatigued by a problem that the first number we get when we calculate, we try to fit it into the answers and we're like, yeah, we're done. And so that's not the way it works. We have to make sure that we're pretty diligent here. So let's go ahead and write that down to make sure that we know when we're done. All right, so with that said, let's get to it. First step was again, writing what we wanted. There's the question right there, the time that the jet reaches the plane. Number two, we're now going to go ahead and go through the information and see what we have. So let's go. A commercial plane takes off from a runway at 3.30 p.m. That's pretty important information. So plane takes off at 3.30 p.m. So plane departs right here. Departs at 3.30 p.m. Right there. Next, what information do we have? Uh, it says uh, 3.30 p.m. local time, uh, headed east at an average speed of 300 miles per hour. So sounds good. Departs at 3.30 p.m. It goes east so over here. I'll just say east at 300 miles per hour. Okay, sounds good. So I'm gonna highlight that right there. All right, perfect. And this is an hour and a half later. A private jet, okay, so there's the jet. So a private jet takes off from the same runway at an average speed of 450 miles per hour in order to catch up to the plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that now. I'll go ahead and use purple here. So an hour and a half later, private jet takes off from the same runway at 450 miles per hour to catch up to the plane. Okay, so what does that mean? An hour and a half later. So an hour and a half later, what would that be? Well, that means that we're going to start at 3.30 p.m. And we're going to add an hour and a half to that, right? I think that would only make sense, right? So again, right over here, if that jet takes off an hour and a half after 3.30, well, let's add an hour and a half. So 3.30, add an hour, 4.30, add that half an hour, 5 o'clock. So the, the jet takes off at 5 p.m. Right over here. So the jet takes off at 5 p.m. 
So jet departs at 5 p.m. Again, the plane, the jet departs at 5 p.m. an hour and a half after 3.30, that's 5 p.m. And then east, the same direction. So again, still gonna go east at 450 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and think about this. We have rates here. We're looking for the time that it's gonna to take to catch up. And so we have two objects. What the heck is all this going on? Here's the main thing that you wanna think about to really crush this. So if you have the plane taking off, going like going east in that direction, going to the right, and then we have the jet taking off, we're basically trying to catch up, right? We're trying to see what that catch up, uh, the time is that they're gonna catch up at. And the cool thing is, this is how we're gonna do it. It's not gonna be like they start at the same place because the plane has to catch up. So the plane's more so like right here. And there's a gap that has to be made up. Because the thing is, remember, if the jet takes off an hour and a half later, that means that there's a gap because the, the plane actually went some distance. So how far did the plane actually go? That's the real question, right? That's the real question. How far did the plane actually go? What's the distance that we have to catch up? So think about it like this. Remember that distance equals rate times time, right? We have to know that distance equals rate times time. Let's go ahead and focus on this with the plane, with the plane, because the rate at which the plane is traveling at is 300 miles an hour, right there. And then the time that it takes, well, it's an hour and a half. Remember, the plane was going for an hour and a half before the jet takes off. So we'll multiply 300 times 1.5 hours, an hour and a half, right? I think we can agree on that. My big old head's in the way, so let me go ahead and just kind of move this right over here. And so if we do the math there, what we're gonna get is 300 times 1.5, you can go ahead and do that right here like this, if you want to. I'll let you do the math, but the answer here will be 450 miles, right there. So what is this, the 450 miles? So it looks like I need to go ahead and actually take this off right over here, but yeah. We have distance equals 450 miles, 300 times 1.5, that's what we have. Now, what does that really mean? Well, what that means is that's how far the jet has to catch up. The jet has to catch up 450 miles. The answer is not 450. The jet has to catch up, so right here, the jet has to catch up. The jet catching up, right? And now with that said, boom. So we have the distance that the jet has to catch up on. We're gonna to need to know the rate at which the jet is catching up at, and then that will help us determine how long it'll take the jet to catch up. Notice what I just did there. The distance rate and time formula, remember that everything in the distance rate time formula that you plug in has to represent the same thing. So at first, what I did here was, we were trying to find the distance that the plane traveled. We used the rate that the plane traveled at, and the time that the plane traveled. So that gave us the distance that the plane traveled in that hour and a half, right there, 450. Now we're gonna do this again, but this time we're gonna use the distance that the jet has to catch up, then the rate at which the jet is catching up, and that will give us the time that the jet is catching up. So there it is, right there. We need to make sure that we use the same things in the same way. If that sounds familiar like proportions, Yep, you're absolutely right. So with that said, let's go ahead and erase all this over here. Let's go ahead and move all this up here. And now we're gonna solve this bad boy right now. So here's how we're gonna do it. First of all, when you have two objects and you're trying to catch up, remember when you're catching up, you're closing the gap. You are subtracting, you are subtracting, you are subtracting. So here we go. If you wanna watch the video on, dist on all the different distance rate time problems, please do. It's somewhere on my YouTube channel or in my courses. Go ahead and find that right there. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely have already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. But we know that the catch-up distance is 450. We know that that's what it's going to be. That's the catch-up distance. Now, what's the catch-up rate? What is the rate going to be? 
Well, the rate is going to be, think about it like this. If you have the plane traveling at 300 and the jet traveling at 450, what's the difference? The difference is 150. Now, why does that matter? The reason that it matters is because of this. It's because for every hour, the jet travels 300, or the, the plane travels 300, excuse me, the jet travels 450. So what that tells you is that this gap right here, everything that they travel together, you cancel it out. Because if I move 300 and he moves 300, we're in the same spot. But if I go 300 and you're going 450, there's that gap of 150. That's the catch-up rate. That's the catch-up rate. The catch-up rate will be the 450 from the jet. So over here, 450 from the jet minus the 300 miles an hour for the plane. And that will be 150 miles per hour. There is our true rate. We have a true distance, our true rate. Now it's time to go ahead and find that true time. So here we go, that, that catch up time, we're gonna have distance equals rate times time. We got 450 equals 150 multiplied by the time. And now we're gonna divide both sides by that 150. And that is it. Bam, right there, 450 divided by 150. That is going to be three because we can go ahead and get el eliminate those zeros. 45 divided by 15, that's gonna be three. You can do the math yourself. Go ahead and pause and calculate if you'd like to, but that will be three for the time. Three hours. So what does that mean? There is no three o'clock here, what's going on? Well, think about it. If we started at 5 p.m., if the jet departs at 5 p.m., and then it takes three hours to catch up after it departs, well, then that's gonna be 8 p.m. right there right there and that's not when the plane departs that you add that time to it's when the jet departs because remember once the jet starts it starts catching up so that's why we get 8 p.m right there and so my party people there it is i know this one was a tough one and we are going to go over the basic ones the fundamental ones and we're going to keep moving our way up but at the end of the day i wanted to show you this hard one because you gotta know it you gotta know how to do these ones that way you can go ahead and guarantee yourself the highest score you can and so again, I'm Anderson. I'm your ASVAB coach. If you have any questions, please let me know. I do have a full program that's going to come up right after the screen here. I want you to check it out. That way you can raise your score and get that job you want. Again, let's ace the ASVAB. Do what you got to do. And I'll see you in class tonight. Cheers. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.